Okay, so in this video we're going to have a look at geometric sequences, also called geometric progressions. Okay, so we're going to have a look at what happens and how we make an nth term for one of these sequences. Uh, but essentially they're quite nice and simple. So grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, make some notes, and we're going to have a look at how we go about this. So this first one says, find the nth term expression for the sequence, and we've got 4, 20, 100, and 500. Now when it comes to a geometric sequence or geometric progression, what we need to have a look at is what we are multiplying each term by to get to the next one. And it's quite a simple way of doing that. You just take the bigger term and divide it by the smaller term before it. So what I mean by that is obviously looking at these first two here. If we do 20 divided by 4, that gives us the answer 5. So that means we must be multiplying by 5 each time. Although, as with any sequence, always just double check and make sure. So that is being times by 5. And then for the next one as well, 20 to 100, that is also being times by 5. So there we go. We've figured out what we're multiplying by each time. Now, writing an nth term for this is a little bit different to normal nth terms. It's very different to linear nth terms, and it's you know it's very different as well to quadratic nth terms. Now, I like to link this back uh, to something that hopefully you already know about, and that's compound interest. Now, if you take this as an example, if we have a thousand pounds in the bank, okay, and we're getting a three percent rate of compound interest, and again, hopefully you're okay with compound interest. If not, then obviously have a look at that in my uh, percentages playlist. But when we're multiplying. Uh, for compound interest, if I was to get 3%, okay, I would multiply by, for the next year, 1.03, okay, and in the next year I would have 1,000 and 30 pounds, don't mean to write a zero there, 1,030 pounds. And then again for the next year we'd do the same, and we'd multiply by 1.03 again, and if I just work that out on my calculator I get, let's have a look, 1,060 pounds and 90p. There we go, 1,060 pounds and 90p. And that right there is a geometric progression in itself. Okay, we're starting off with a thousand, we multiply it by 1.03 each time to get each next number in the sequence, and again we can then go about creating the sequence. Now in terms of how we go about doing the compound interest, and again hopefully you are well versed with the compound interest, but I would get the starting amount, which in this case is the thousand pounds, okay, and we would write this down in the calculator, I would write in 1000 and I'd, multi I'd write down times 1.03, and we put that to the power of whatever year we're on. Now what I mean by that in terms of whatever year we're on, obviously in the second year, obviously this is our first year here where we start with 1,000, at the end of the second year, we would have times that by 1.03 to the power of one, okay, to get to that second year. When we get to the third year, okay, or the end of that, that period of time, which is actually the end of the second year, start of the third year, it would have been times 1.03 to the power of 2, okay? So just thinking about what we would do there, to get the start of the third year, I would have done 1,000 times 1.03, but only to the power of 2. Okay, that obviously gives me the amount at the end of the second year, which is at the start of the third year. And this concept, this idea, is what, how we apply this to the actual nth term for the geometric sequence, okay? We take our starting number, which in this case is four. Let's just do this to the side. Four. I write what I'm timesing it by, just like with compound interest, we times it by 1.03. In this circumstance, we're timesing by five. And then I need to write my n number in terms of a power, in terms of the amount of years, like in below, like below. So I would write 4 times 5 to the power of n, but if you notice again, the second year the power was 1, the third year the power was 2, it's always 1 less than the actual position it has in the sequence, so it's n minus 1. So I start with 4, I times it by 5, and do that to the power of n minus 1. And if you have a look at my little sequence just up here, 4 times 5 to the power of, and look for the second number there, which is 20. 4 times, let's just write this in, in fact, we'll test it out, let's have a look. So for the first one there, we've done 4 times 5 to the power of 2 minus 1, okay, for the second one. And that is 4 times 5 to the power of 1, which is 4 times 5, which gives us 20. The next one, the 100. We could have done 4 times 5 to the power of 3 minus 1. There you go, for that third number in the sequence. And that would be 4 times 5 squared, 
and 4 times 5 squared, well 5 squared is 25, 4 times 25 is 100. So there you go, you can see that it works, okay? Uh, but really, all we've got to do, we get the starting number, just like we do in compound interest, our thousand pounds, in this case our four, you multiply it by uh, whatever the actual uh, term is being multiplied by each time, our, which is called a, our common difference or our common ratio there. Uh, we're times it by five, so put times five, and then you just put to the power of n minus one, and it's always the power of n minus one there, other than a few little scenarios which we'll look at later in the video. But there we go, that's how we go about it. Again, hopefully that's nice, just linking that back to compound interest for you as well. So you can see obviously a little bit of linkage here with another subject, another topic that we've looked at. Okay, so let's have a look at another question. Okay, so find the nth term expression for this sequence, so 3, 12, 48, 192. So let's just double check and see what we're actually multiplying by here. Now obviously you can probably spot that in your head, but I'm just going to do the bigger one divided by the one before it, and it tells us it, there we go, 4. So we're multiplying by 4, and as I said before, always double check that that's actually what's happening with all of them. 12 times 4 is 48, so that's absolutely fine. So as I said, you take your starting number, which in this case is 3, so it's 3 times 4, and then we just put the power of n minus 1. There we go, and there's our answer. Really is as simple as that, nice and quick and simple to do. And there we go, that's our final answer, so here's a couple for you to have a go at. So hopefully these will be nice and quick for you to have a go at. So pause the video there, have a go, and we'll go over the answers in a sec. Okay, so for the first one. The first number's 3, we're times in by 2, so it's 3 times 2 to the power of n minus 1. The one over to the right there starts with 11, so it's 11 times 2 to the power of n minus 1. Down the bottom here, we've got 2, and we're timesing by 7, so 2 times 7 to the power of n minus 1. And for the last one there, it starts with 3, goes to 15, so it's 3 times 5, again to the power of n minus 1. There we go, so really nice and quick and simple to get the answers for these. We're going to have a look at something ever so slightly different, because these nth terms can sometimes be written in a slightly different way, and we're going to have a look at how we approach one of those questions. Okay, so when it comes to another type of question, let's have a look at this. So find the nth term expression. Now we're going to have a look at what to do here. So we're going to follow exactly the same process. It starts with 6, and we are timesing by 2 each time, and that is the same for the next one as well. So again, we just write 6 times 2 to the power of n minus 1. Now you may be asked to write this in a different format. You may be asked for that 6 to be a slightly different number. And if you are, we'll have a look at how we can actually go about this, because 6 in itself can be written, and if we think about product to prime factors, it can be written as 3 times 2 or 2 times 3. And one of those 2s matches this 2 just here. So if I write this 6 in a slightly different way, I could write that as 3 times 2. And that is all being times by that 2 to the power of n minus 1. Now, because I can write this in a slightly different way, I can actually simplify this down a bit, okay? I can make it look slightly different, because these two twos here that are being times together, and hopefully you remember from your laws of indices, when you are timesing together with the same base number, you can actually add the powers together. Now, that two on the left doesn't have a power written with it, but it is two to the power of one. So that means that these two powers here, the power of one, and the power of n minus 1 can all be added together. And if we think about what that would look like when we actually add it together, if we do this to the side, you've got the power of 1, and you're going to add that to n minus 1. Okay, And that makes it quite nice because 1 take away 1, they cancel each other out, and all you are left with is n. Okay, So this simplifies down quite nicely, and if we write this out then, we've got 3 at the start, so we've got 3 times 2 to the power of n now when you add those powers together. So 1 plus n, take away 1, the 1 and the minus 1 cancel each other out and you're just left with 3 times 2 to the power of n. So you can actually write these nth terms in a slightly different format, it just depends on what the question's actually asking. Now this particular question here just says find the nth term expression, so technically this is absolutely fine as the nth term. But if we want to write it, and I'm going to use the language in its simplest form, having that number at the start as, it's small, as it's small as it can be, then we are actually able to do this as well sometimes and just write it in a slightly different way. And you'll notice as well it does actually work. We can go back to the original sequence. For the first number there, n is 1. So 3 times 2 to the power of 1 is 3 times 2, gives us 6. And then for the next one, n is 2, so it's 3 times 2 squared. 3 times 4 is 12, so it does keep on giving us our numbers there, and it does work, okay? So just another way that you can actually approach one of these, and we'll have a look at one more of these before you have a go. Okay, so taking the same approach then for this sequence, we're going to try and write it as simply as we can. So the first number is 10, and it looks like we are multiplying by 5. Yes, we are, so we're times in by 5. So we've got 10 
times 5 to the power of n minus 1. Now again, looking at the 10, 10 breaks down to 2 times 5, so we get another one of those 5s in there. So we've got 2 times 5 times 5 to the n minus 1. And again, we can take the same approach now. That 5 in the middle technically has a little power of 1 with it. And when we add those powers together, the 1 and the n minus 1, those 1s are going to cancel out again. So all we're going to have left now is the 2. There we go. Multiplied by the 5. And that's going to be to the power of n. And there we go. So that is how we could approach another, another way when we're looking at these geometric sequences or geometric progressions. I'm thinking about how we could write that nth term just in a slightly different way, which will also always result in us actually getting the correct sequence from it. Okay, so there are two different ways of writing these sequences, and that is how you go about it. Now, I've got a couple of questions for you to have a go at, and I want you to try writing it, writing bo both these nth terms I'm going to give you now in this format here where you've got that number at the start as small as possible. Okay, so here they are for you to have a go at. Okay, so there's two questions there, so pause the video, have a go, remember to write those nth terms as simply as possible, and we will go over the answer in a sec. Okay, so for the first one, now to start with we get 8 times, let's have a look, 8 to 32 is times 4, so it's 8 times 4 to the power of n minus 1. Now 8 can break down to 2 times 4, so let's have a look, we've got 2 times 4 times 4 to the power of n minus 1. And again, let's put that power of 1 in and combine those 4s together. And our final answer, when we add those powers of the 4s, we get 2 times 4 to the power of n. And there we go, there is our final answer. Let's have to highlight that and move on to our next one. So for this one, starting numbers 12, so we've got 12 times 3 to the power of n minus 1. And again, 12 can break down to 4 times 3, so I'm going to write the 4 over here, so 4 times 3, and again we're times that by 3 to the n minus 1. And again, that 3 has got a power of 1 with it. So combining these 3s together, if we add those powers together, we get 4 times 3 to the power of n. And there we go, and that is how we go about writing these nth terms in a slightly different way. Now I've got one question for us to have a look at before we finish, so let's have a look at that one now. Okay, so this question's slightly different. It says the nth term for this sequence can be written as n, uh, sorry, 2 to the power of n plus a. Work out the value of a. So have a little go at this question, see what you get, see what comes out, see if you can get the answer, and we'll go over the answer in a sec. Okay, so looking at this one then, let's see how we're going to get this uh, nth term written as 2 to the power of n plus a, because that's a lot different to any that we've looked at at the moment. We've got no time sign going on in there. So if we have a look then, we've got 8 at the start, so we're going to do 8 times, and to get to 16 we are multiplying by 2, so it's 8 times 2 to the power of n minus 1. Now there we go, we've got 8. Now if we break 8 down as a product of prime factors, and let's just do this to the side, 8 is 2 times 4, and 4 is 2 times 2. So we end up with a lot of 2s. So we've got the 2, the 2, the 2, and that can be written as 2 times 2 times 2, or we could write that as 2 cubed. Okay, thinking about products of prime factors, you can write this down as so, but then that simplifies down to 2. <laughs> what on earth am I writing a 3 for? There we go, let's get rid of that. Times 2 times 2 times 2, I was thinking about the cubed, 2 cubed. There we go. So, if we go about trying to apply that then, we've got 2 cubed and we're multiplying that by 2 to the power of n minus 1. So if I actually go about simplifying this down, I can add together the powers, but this time we've got 3 and we've got an n minus 1. And let's think about what we get when we add those together. So 3 add n minus 1, while the 3 and the minus 1 are going to turn into 2. So actually we've got 2 plus n or n plus 2. Okay, simplifying down those powers. So if I apply that down here, then we've got 2 to the power of n plus 2. And there is our answer, and our value of a is 2. Okay, so there we go, something else to be thinking about, just a slightly different question getting you to have a think about obviously these nth terms and again just like on last uh, the last questions we can always test this out 2 to the power of n plus 2 so for the first term here which is 8 we've got 2 to the power of n plus 1 or 1 plus sorry 1 plus 2 so it's 2 cubed and that is 8 for the next one we've got 2 to the power of 4 then we've got 2 to the power of 5 and then we've got 2 to the power of 6 and you can always test that out on a calculator 
and you will see that you will get these actual numbers here. So there we go, that is geometric progressions or geometric sequences and how to find their nth terms. Hopefully you found that useful and helpful. If you did, please like, please comment, please subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one. Thank you.